Hey guys, it's me again, Barrett. Uh, I probably look a lot more disheveled since the last time I hosted. Still haven't quite uh, recovered from CES, but the good news is I'm beginning to resemble Obi-Wan again, so that's kind of nice, I think, anyways. Uh, anyways, um, yeah, let's get that uh, tech news everyone's talking about. As we've seen, the high-end KB Lake CPUs won't be worth the upgrade for a lot of people running Skylake. But for those running lower-end CPUs, looks like the rest of the KB Lake desktop lineup is pretty tantalizing. Intel has listed its KB Lake Pentium chips on its Arc product site, and at least five of them support hyper-threading. The Pentium G4560, 4560T, 4600, 4600T, and 4620 have two cores and four threads. These chips will still have disadvantages compared to core brand chips. Lower clock speeds, less cache, and no support for the AVX2 instruction set, which is useful for video and content creation. But they're all under 100 bucks, with the cheapest coming in at 64 bucks US. So budget gamers can take advantage of a quad core CPU, and no one has to know it's really dual core. How does he do it? They'll say, and you know what? Let him wonder. Let him wonder. The US military has released a pretty cool and slightly terrifying video of their new drone swarm in action. The bots used were Perdix fixed wing drones, which were licensed by the military after they were designed by MIT students in 2013. They're about a foot across and aren't actually autonomous themselves. They share one distributed brain for decision making so they can adapt to drones leaving or entering the swarm. The military says the Perdix drones will be used to conduct surveillance in lieu of one larger drone. Because wouldn't you rather be surveilled by an all-encompassing swarm of drones controlled by a hive mind instead of just one? I know I would. <laughs> the future is bright. See, here's something that kind of takes a bit of uh, the sting off a story about swarms of potentially killer robots. The founders of eBay and LinkedIn are investing $20 million into the ethics and governance of Artificial Intelligence Fund. It's intended to kickstart development of AI that considers ethics and morals rather than simple cold logic. It's something that more people in the tech industry are starting to think about, including Elon Musk, now that AI is progressing as far as it is. Yeah, we can make an AI that beats the best human chess player with ease, but how do you make one that feels its opponent's pain as it figuratively destroys them? We don't know and neither do these rich people, but hopefully we can answer those questions by throwing a bunch of money into a big pot. The pot will come up with something. It always does. <sighs> cheap joke, cheap joke. It's time for shorter news stories said more quickly than the others, of course. AMD is planning on launching its Ryzen CPUs before March 3rd, according to an invite to a GDC talk, which mentions the recently launched chip. GDC runs from February 27th to March 3rd, so that's where that date comes from. It makes a lot of sense. Meanwhile, sources on the internet say NVIDIA will launch the 1080 Ti at PAX East, which takes place between March 10th and March 12th. Just thought you should know. Meanwhile, Ars Technica has rounded up all the evidence claimed that the Nintendo Switch will sell for around 250 bucks US and that Zelda Breath of the Wild could launch with the system as part of a bundle. We'll get more concrete details Thursday night from the Switch livestream. Microsoft is working on a new Windows 10 feature that locks your PC when you move away from it called Dynamic Lock, but internally it's codenamed Windows Goodbye. See that Apple? Microsoft can be fun too. So, that's nice. After buying Pebble last month, Fitbit has now also purchased VectorWatch, a UK-based smartwatch maker. Same story, Vector watches will still work, but won't get any new software updates. The rest of the wearable industry trembles in Fitbit's shadow, wondering when their time will come. Sources for all of today's stories can be found in the NCIX forum post linked in the description. James from Twitter. He's a dude from Oshkosh. And oh my gosh gosh, he sets my heart a flitter. No homo. I know you. I know you super well. I know you so well that I know that you would love to win an ASIO MK Retro typewriter inspired mechanical keyboard. It's a little quirky, but hey, you're kind of quirky. Well, it's a good thing that the uh, extent to which I know you is so vast because we're giving one, uh, one of those away this month. All you've got to do to enter to win that is subscribe to NCIX Tech Tips and comment on any video from January. We'll announce the winners on the first net link of next month, February. See you then. And good luck, of course. This is my normal voice.
Alright, that's it for Netlink Daily. Thank you so much for watching. Click over here for previous videos and check us out on Twitter over here. But as always, like the video if you liked it, comment below for fans with benefits, and subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX. Also, if you notice my band-aid, I cut myself cooking last night, so I was bleeding everywhere. Good night, everybody.